Hello and welcome to yet another episode of How to Be a Great GM. By popular demand, most of you have been asking about NPCs and how to make them awesome. Well, just as you might have seen in How to Be a Great PC, there are a couple questions you need to ask of your NPC before you launch them into your world. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. There are six different roles that your NPC can take, and we're going to unpack each one to make sure that you're using your NPCs to their maximum effect. Every NPC that you introduce to your party should have some kind of purpose. And it doesn't have to be a huge purpose either. Your NPC, your PCs, excuse me, will be asking things like, I want to go shopping. Does the blacksmith automatically become an NPC? Well, that's entirely up to you. And it becomes part of your pace strategy. How fast do you want the mission to advance? How much information do you think your characters have already managed to amass? And how much is lacking? In other words, your NPCs are a tool for you to be able to control the speed of your game. If you don't want to have NPCs interacting with the players whilst they go shopping, simply say, you go shopping, whatever is in the book at 5% more or less, you can purchase. On the other hand, if you are a crafty GM, you can use every single NPC that you create to do exactly what you want to do, which is make you look like a great game master. So, role number one. The NPC might be a guide. Now, guides have a very, very specific function. And you shouldn't really try and mangle everything into one NPC. A, it makes the super incredible NPC who the players might think is actually a player character. And two, it limits you in terms of what you can then do with the character. You can't suddenly just kill them off, for example, because, well, then suddenly you have to bring in more NPCs whom the characters don't have a relationship with. So your guide character is literally the character who will take the player's characters from point A to point B. That might be the sea captain. He might be a guide. It might be literally the guide they hire to take them to or from wherever it is that they're going. The guide shouldn't give them very much information about where they're going because his role is guiding. He may be able to point out pitfalls, and you can use him to control which way the players go. Oh, I would not go that way, for I know there is a great pathway of evil down that way, and we should go to the right. Well, maybe the players are going to go to the great evil anyway, but at least you've given them the choice. So guides are really useful for moving players' characters from point A to point B fairly quickly, instead of having to bumble around. But don't let them give away too much information. That is the role of the next type of NPC, the advancement NPC. Their function is to literally advance. So if you want to have the librarian come up to the characters when they're on that quest for some lost knowledge and really prevent them from happening, then that NPC is not an advancement NPC. They're a different type of NPC. An advancement NPC is literally somebody who helps move the story along. And this is one of the most powerful types of NPCs that are out there because you can use them to drive the story and get the players going. So perhaps it is a blacksmith whom, whilst he's busy hammering out a kink of some armor for one of the characters in the party, he just happens to casually mention, oh, I heard that the king's army was going to leave tomorrow. Now, maybe the players hadn't picked up on the 15,000 clues that you've already given them that the, part, the army is leaving tomorrow, but the blacksmith helps to advance that along. Alternatively, it could be the navigator in the spaceport who says, oh, there's an ion storm that's due to arrive this afternoon, and then all shipping is cancelled. Again, that just helps to advance. Alternatively, the advancement character is someone who just gives information. Oh, I know the cryptic clue for the sacred tomb. Uh, you simply have to give it a ruby and that will open the door for you. Because perhaps the players have spent too much time trying to figure out how to open this door and you just want it to move along. Make sure, though, that the information is not just given because otherwise the players will feel that you're railroading them. Have it come from unlikely sources. The third type of NPC is a very easy type of NPC to play, that is the antagonist. The gruff mayor who just does not want to deal with the party, that thief who tries to steal from them whilst they're out on that shopping spree, 
any kind of NPC that is offering opposition should offer opposition and then if the players treat that NPC right can shift from being an antagonistic type of NPC to perhaps being an advancement NPC or perhaps being a guide. Oh no 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 you get into the castle by going through the sewers. Uh, since I myself have broken in I mean entered many times through that exact way. The antagonistic NPC really does not need to have a huge amount of life built into them. They are there simply to serve a purpose. That purpose is to cause temporary derailment of the PC's plans. And then later on, maybe they can advance them. Then you need to have, well, you don't need to have, but it's good to have the mentor NPC. And the mentor NPC is different from the guide. The guide will say we should go left or we should go right or it's on the other side of that uh, nebula over there. The mentor is the one who in between missions, perhaps, or at the launch of each of the adventures, is giving the players a little bit of advice. This is really just a vehicle for you as GM to pass information to the players. Well, you remember, Master, when you were out on the last mission, you said you ran out of rope. Perhaps you should take some more with you since you're going mountain climbing. For example, is a great way of using the mentor to help shape things. And there's nothing wrong with having a mentor being perhaps even just a cleric where the party goes to get healed regularly. You can use mentors to introduce all kinds of useful information. And the more you build into these NPCs, the more the guide has got a background, the more the mentor has got a background, the more the advancement character has got a background, the more the players will go back to them to get information from them. And the more story you can build up. So eventually when you cut their head off, uh, aka Ned Stark, everyone goes, oh, you killed one of our favorite NPCs. But the point is that they've become a favorite. So then, of course, you can use it however you like. So the mentor is all about making sure that the players are on the right track and that they haven't forgotten something fairly important which you know they are going to need. The mentor acts as a little bit of GM advice from time to time. Then another type of NPC that you can introduce, and these are quite tricky and will take some playing on your behalf, is the long-term interest NPC. Now, this NPC may be of use from time to time, and their role can shift quite dramatically. And we will look at the long-term NPC in greater detail in, more, uh, in subsequent videos. But suffice it to say, not every NPC should be planned as a long-term NPC because they are more complex. But they are more rewarding, ultimately, to play as the Game Master and give the characters a little bit more as well. But generally speaking, the long-term NPC is the guide, the antagonist at times, the mentor as well, and will sometimes just advance the plot. So, again, if you look at sort of feature films in terms of what is a long-term NPC, Sherlock Holmes has a long-term uh, NPC who keeps helping him out in the form of the detectives he goes through. Lestrade, for example, uh, keeps coming back. He's not really a guide, although sometimes he is when he makes the wrong conclusion, which sets Holmes on the right direction. Sometimes he's a mentor when he mentions a particular legal process for Holmes to then completely ignore. But he is in it for the long run, and over time his character develops. As opposed to, say, the police officers that step into a crime scene only temporarily and will either hinder Holmes's investigation or act as a guide or as a, an advancement for the story. Finally, and this is the trickiest uh, NPC to play because oftentimes it will feel as it is the least rewarding, is the support NPC. This is literally the butler who runs the mansion and who offers a kindly word here or there but doesn't really add anything to the story. This is for characters that have maybe got a little bit more of a sedentary life. So perhaps it's the AI on board the starship. It can't really guide the characters. It doesn't really have that kind of capacity. It can't give them good advice, but it can certainly order new uniforms after every mission. They are there in the background and they just keep things running over. However, if you consistently bring back the same support NPCs time and again, the players will build a relationship into them. That way, when the starship blows up and the AI sends one final little word through the communicator, it's a lot more poignant. And of course, you become a great game master. 
So those are the six different types of NPC that you can introduce into your game. And remember, try and keep them in their categories. It helps you keep your focus on which NPC is doing what. It also allows you to move quite swiftly through uh, your story because you can add and subtract NPCs as you need to. That captain who's going to help them get through that gate? Haha, -ha, not this time. He's away. Where is he? Well, maybe that's an adventure on its own. But for now, that usual access point is denied or he's there and he happily lets you your your players characters through without too much of a hindrance npcs really can shape a game and there's so much that we're going to be talking about so remember to hit the like button subscribe button if you want to know more of what's going on there's a new website that's just launched that's www.greatgamemaster.com and that aggregates together great uh, how to be a great game master, how to be a great player, plus the Bacon RPG that I run. And all of those are brought together in this really cool website. So well done to Derek and the team for putting that together. And um, until next time, happy gaming.